So we're here to talk about uh, Bright Star. Um, the film takes place in the Georgian era during the Romantic movement, and this this is, that is true. Yes, it is. It is. Did, um, did you did you Google that? I did. Actually, IMDb. I should and, do uh, that. Um, <laughs> um, what was it like doing? You know, like doing a period piece. Uh, you can give me a straight answer and then a funny answer. I'm trying to knock down all the the, the inappropriate answers that are coming to mind. You can just let them all out. Nope, won't do this it. This is an un, no, working un, on working on. This is a red band movie site. Tourette's. I'm working on anti. Um, it, it 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 didn't matter what Jane wanted to do. Like if she wanted to get in touch with me and make a movie, then I would just do what she, you know. If she wanted to do like a Fred Wiseman style documentary about bowel movements, then I would be in it. Whenever you went in to read, did you go in to read for Mr. Brown or did you read for any character and she was like, this is who you're going to be? No, no, I, I, made, I made her a videotape because she was, she was in, in Australia and, uh, and so well, first of all, apparently she was on, uh, she saw the assassination of Jesse James, and so then she came back, and um, uh, I found out that she wanted to get in touch with me about a movie, and, and I, I'm a big fan of the piano. I ended up uh, reading the script that she sent, sort of, it was very sort of surreal the whole time. She, she called up, which was kind of surreal, and, uh, and and, and she just wanted me to give a Scottish accent like a shot on, on, you know, on camera for oh, her to man. see if I, I could I could do it. And so I went and rented uh, Train Spotting, and I think I just aped Kelly McDonald a couple sort of <laughs> Kelly McDonald monologues on camera for her. And then I gave her just a crap load of my ideas for um, for Charles Brown. And it's lucky that I had any because sometimes you read a script and it might be fantastic and they might say like, uh, you know, go read for this dude and you read the dude and you're like, it's a great script but I just don't, I yeah. don't understand what I would do with it, like why you would hire me over somebody else. Yeah. Um, but no, it's very much a process of me like going to get the job, you know. I think that's one thing that people, I don't know if they realize but, um, you know, I got to go get jobs. It's not like anybody's just knocking on my door and saying, like, hey, do you want to come and do a, this thing? How, do, you, do you just want this job? I have to go interview for it. Yeah, that was a pretty epic answer. Thank you. It was, long, <laughs> it was such a long one. I'm sorry. No, it was great. Um, in film, you seem to gravitate more towards like serious roles, but you're like a really funny guy. What do you like doing better, comedy or drama? Well... The problem is, is my, my mother is the problem because she 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 thinks I'm really funny, and so when I when I'm at home, mothers are always right. It's true. Well, I don't know. I think she gives me a lot of leeway. So like wh when I'm at home, I'm just knocking her dead. But she thinks it's. I mean, all, she thinks all my C minus material is funny. So I leave home and I kind of fancy myself a comedian, and then I, I actually try it, and it and it doesn't doesn't go well, but. I mean, the truth is, like, I just like somebody that, for whatever reason, you know, you read a script and you just start getting ideas, or yeah. you read a script and you just don't. Yeah. And, um, and obviously you want to hedge your bets a little bit because you, you, you don't have Final Cut, you're just sort of a cog in this machine, and you want to make sure that the filmmakers that you're working for have made stuff that you trust, or that they are people that you that you trust just sort of like in a yeah. you, know, you sit down and have a meeting and you talk about films you know in general and you feel like you could put you know your sort of creative life in their hands for a few months yeah um, you co-wrote all the Real girls with uh, David do you guys have any plans I mean I'm sure y'all want to work together again but do you have any plans now to work together on something else no we don't um, I mean I you know, it's 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 been a, it's been kind of nice for me just to kind of like break out a little bit and kind of do do my own thing. Um, uh, it, it was in some ways sort of. I mean, I think at the beginning it was a bit of a curse on my confidence when I was working only with my friends, and you yeah. think to yourself like, am I only 
you know, am I only going to be able to work with my friends? And um, you, 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 you don't want to feel like your acting is, you know, needs training wheels. Yeah. But then when I got the job on the Cameron Crowe movie, I thought, maybe I can do this sort of on my own. So no, we don't have anything um, uh, planned, but yeah, who knows? Yeah, and you did, you know, with, with Pretty Bird, like that was your first writing direction. Uh, debut. Um, yeah. What's do you do you know the status on it? Because there's a lot of people that are, that really want to see it that couldn't make you know the, the film festivals that it played at. Is there going to be a theatrical release or? Yeah, I, I I don't know. You don't know yet. I don't. And and you know it was it was a uh, it was a, it was pretty insane to go to, to work with Billy and Paul mm -hmm. Billy Crude and Paul Giamatti. And yeah, it's pretty yeah. insane He's that great. they wanted to. Uh, you know what I mean? It's just kind of like it's sort of like I don't know. I just it felt kind of felt like you know. It's like if Mashuga came by your practice space and felt like they wanted you to open for them. Yeah. And you would say, but you guys are so much better than they. And um, it was pretty intimidating, but it was also really fantastic because those guys really allowed me to direct them. You know. Yeah. And. Um, but that's why I think it's important to see to go see Bright Star because I think it's just a rare I think it's just a rare opportunity to see a really fantastic sort of gem of a movie in a marketplace that I think is getting a little homogenized. You know, people are hedging their bets. They're giving um, money to make films that already have a built-in audience that are franchised yeah. movies. And I mean, I don't know how many more superheroes I can take. Yeah, um, a lot of superheroes lately, and I don't I, I don't relate to. People that can fly. So yeah. What there's not a lot of is drunk history. How did you get that's on true. that? That's true. That's that's actually my last question. So make it super epic. Oh man. <laughs> All right. So I figured out pretty early on that I wasn't gay. I was heartbroken. Okay. Um, that was seventh grade. I still tried seventh, eighth, ninth, and tenth grade, and I just realized it, it wasn't going to happen. Um, then years later. Um, Derek Waters called up through my agent. I mean, I, I mean, you have to understand. Like, I just sit in my little house and I watch. Uh, you know, half the day I watch Frontline and half the day I watch America's Funniest Videos. Mm -hmm. Me and the dog go for a walk and then I just come back. And sometimes I play the drums downstairs and I come back upstairs. So there's a lot of you know, there's a lot of like isolated, insulated time that I spend. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't like going to parties. I don't like going to meet people. I don't like sort of like mm -hmm. I don't use Hollywood for people that yeah you know, no, that's for, cool for, for the reasons why people I guess go use Hollywood yeah um, and so it's strange because these you know these phone calls from Jane Campion or Derek Waters or whomever just kind of like come out of the sky a little bit and he called up and and said. Uh, he, he just liked the stuff that I did and it's I mean that's also sort of strange because you think you're just sort of like working in a vacuum you know yeah. you think like you and your parents are the only people that know what you're doing um, but apparently people are watching movies and, and I think that's great and, and he called up and said uh, you know do you want to do this and I said come film I'm already drunk and he said <laughs> oh no no we want you to be yeah. the guy who who's sober and I was like oh man it's um, Disappointing, and uh, so we, we literally we just shot it up the street at, at this dude's house, and it was like a day, you know. Yeah. But the the real champion, and I can't, I, I need to go figure out the guy's name. I, I knew it for a minute. The real champion is the actual drunk. Person. Yeah, they got they got really drunk. And people have asked me like, do you like are those guys really drunk? And I mean, I think you can tell that they are. Yeah. Like, I think you can tell when people are Whenever they're throwing up, I mean, yeah, it's I mean, like, like, if that guy's, I mean, that's some, like, Daniel Day-Lewis shit. It's like, <laughs> that guy totally threw up for, for fake. Um, but that guy told an insane story, and, um, I mean, obviously the trick of that, that, uh, that whole little web series is just getting your your mouth exactly you know yeah. your mouth and this drunk person's words sort of you know, like hit, hiccuping you know, and yeah that. exactly in sync and uh, I mean that idea I mean had crazy legs and um, I mean I think I think Derek is I mean to have stumbled upon that idea is is I mean it was like crazy genius so, yeah absolutely so um, he asked me to do it and, and you know it's just like an afternoon you rocked it out 
I did. I. I. I mean. It, I, I laid there and I let those dudes throw fake snakes on me, so. It was great. I, yeah, I think it was really funny. <laughs> well, it was, so, well, cool. Well, that's it, we're out. Why? It's gotta go, man. That's BS. <laughs>Men's room, out. Poet's got to do a bit of writing. My stitching has more merit and admirers than your two scribblings put together. And I can make money from it. But every word he wrote inspired the rapture of first love. A thing of beauty is a joy forever. Its loveliness increases. It will never pass into nothingness. This fall, from Academy Award winner Jane Campion, comes a romance that would live forever. I get anxious if I don't see her. When I don't hear from him, it's as if I've died. As if the air is sucked out from my lungs. Mr. Keats is very brilliant. Was it successful? You taught me to love. You never said, only the rich. I must warn you of a trap that you're walking into, John. You'll lose your freedom permanently. For what? You are already the source of so much gossip. Apparently there's nothing I can do to persuade you of the gravity of this situation. We must cut the threads. No, I can't. I never will. You know I would do anything. It is a game. It is a game to her. There is a holiness to the heart's affection. You know nothing of that. Based on the true story of a brilliant poet, and the bright star who was his shining light. I almost wish we were butterflies and lived but three summer days. Three such days with you I could fill with more delight than 50 common years could ever contain.